An interview is a fantastic way to test your English listening and speaking skills, but not just test them, test them under pressure. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing right here in this video today. Welcome back to all of my incredible subscribers. So good to see you guys again. Yeah, today we have episode one of my point of view English interview series. Here's how it works. First, you are going to listen to the interview question. All of the questions that I've selected today, that I've picked out today, have been taken from real IELTS exams in the past, okay? So first, listen to the question. Then, watch. I'm going to give you guys a demonstration of how to respond. In other words, I'm going to show you the correct way to answer these questions. Next, it will be your turn, your turn to respond to the question. But don't worry because I'm giving you guys a framework to use to help you respond, okay? Now, today, when you respond, I want you guys to really push yourselves, try to use the full 30 seconds that I'm going to give you talk for the whole time, okay? Now, if you want to kick things up a notch, make it a little more challenging, a little more difficult, take a look at this. For each of today's 10 questions, I'm going to teach you guys a really useful spoken English expression, okay? So here's an extra challenge. When you are responding to the question, try to use the bonus vocabulary word. Click like on this video, make sure you are subscribed, and let's jump in. Here's my first question for you guys. Question one of today's interview is, what was your childhood like? Now, when you are responding to this question, here's a general framework you can use. You can mention your family. You can talk about where you lived. You can discuss what you liked to do as a kid. All of these relate. All of these circle back to what your childhood was like, okay? Now, here is the bonus vocab word to use, a blast, a blast. What does this mean? It means something really fun and enjoyable, okay? Now, here's an example. My childhood was a blast because I spent so much time playing with my cousins, right? So this is really saying that this person's childhood was super fun, super enjoyable, right? Because they spent so much time playing with their cousins. Now, I'm going to go first to give you an example of how to correctly respond to this question. Yeah, I would say overall, I had a really great childhood. I had friends who I really cared about. I had loving parents who did a wonderful job taking care of me and my little sister. We had two family dogs and, you know, we would go out to the countryside and go fishing and we would go to the movies. We would have a blast, you know, me and my family, me and my friends. So I'd say it was a great childhood. That was my response. Now it's your turn. Push yourself, take 30 seconds to respond to this question. And once again, for an extra challenge, try to use a blast somewhere in your response. Go ahead. Moving on to question two, what is your happiest childhood memory? Yeah, when you think back to your childhood, when you remember all of the things you did and said and the places you went to and the people you spent time with, what is a really happy memory that comes to mind? So here's the framework. You can talk about a fun moment. 
You can talk about who the people who were there. You can talk about why, the reason it was special, right? And here's the bonus vocab expression you can try to use, a trip down memory lane. What does that mean? A trip down memory lane. It means thinking back on old memories in a nostalgic way. What is nostalgic? That means you are remembering the past and it's making you happy. It's making you want to go back to the past and relive some of the good times that you went through before, right? So here's an example. Talking about my happiest memory always feels like a trip down memory lane. Okay, here's my response. Here I go. Yeah, when I think back to my childhood, there are a lot of happy memories. I have to be honest, it's kind of hard to choose my happiest childhood memory. But let's take that trip down memory lane. Let's think about it. I would say probably my happiest childhood memory uh, was Christmas morning. You know, every Christmas morning, I'd get together with my parents and my sister and open presents under the tree. That was really something special. Okay, that was my response. Now it's your turn. Give it a shot. Give it a try. And if you can, work this bonus vocab expression into your response. Go ahead. Moving right along to question number three, did you have any responsibilities as a child? Any responsibilities? What is a responsibility? That means something you were in charge of, something people trusted you with to do, right? Like maybe you had chores that you had to do around the house, such as walking the dog or taking out the trash or helping clean up after dinner, something like that. Um, maybe it was helping family or siblings like, you know, brothers and sisters, something like that. So this is all about childhood responsibilities. Here's a really fantastic spoken English expression. Look at the bonus vocab here. Pull your weight. What does it mean to pull your weight? It means to do your share of the work or responsibility. In other words, to do your part, to contribute what you should contribute and not slack, not slack off, not be lazy, right? Not shirk the responsibility not shirk responsibility or ignore the responsibility or try to get away, try to get out of the responsibility, right? Look at this. I always had to pull my weight by helping with housework. Yeah, so how did you pull your weight or how were you expected to pull your weight? That's what we're going to talk about here. Here's my response. You know, as a kid, there were a lot of different ways that my parents expected me to pull my weight and contribute to the household and to the general well-being of the household, right? I definitely had some chores I had to do. I would help clean up after dinner. I would take the dog for a walk, and I would also mow the lawn with the lawnmower, making sure the yard looked nice. Now it's your turn. Push yourself for the full 30 seconds. Tell me about your childhood responsibilities. And if you can, try to include pull your weight. Go ahead. Up next, we have a really interesting question here. Question four is, who was the most 
influential person in your childhood. Influential. What does that mean? It means they made a really big impact on you. They changed your life and probably in a positive way, in a good way, right? So you can talk about a family member. You can talk about a teacher who made a big impact on you, uh, brought some positive change into your life. You can talk about someone you looked up to. Here's a really great expression. If you look up to somebody, that means you admire them. You think they're really great and maybe you want to be like them someday. They're kind of a role model for you, right? So yeah, that is the bonus vocab expression. Look up to, to admire or respect someone. Here's an example sentence. I really looked up to who? To my dad because he always worked so hard. Here I go, here's my response. You know, I'm going to steal this example sentence and say that growing up, the most influential person in my life, yeah, was my dad. He had a big impact on me, especially when it came to my interests and hobbies. You know, I've always wanted to be a writer ever since I was a little kid, and when I would share my stories with my dad, he would give me feedback because he's a writer as well. So I really looked up to him in many ways. All right, guys, now it's your turn. Who was the most influential person in your childhood? Give it a shot. We are now halfway through this English interview. If you are still with me, take your hand, give yourself a pat on the back because you're doing fantastic. Let's keep pushing along here. Getting a little bit deeper with this question. Yeah, what challenges did you face while growing up? Getting a little bit personal, right? Uh, a challenge, something difficult that you had to go through that you had to work through, that you had to overcome, right? So here's the general framework. Talk about a struggle that you had as a kid, such as school. You know, maybe you struggled in school. There were challenges in school with maybe bullying or maybe bad grades or, you know, maybe attendance or maybe you didn't get along well with the teachers, something like that. Maybe you struggled with making friends, right? Maybe you could talk about that, the struggle of friendship in your childhood, or maybe it was something else entirely. Here's the bonus vocab expression, get through. What does it mean to get through something? It means to manage or survive a difficult situation. Mm, I love that wording there. I love the phrasing used here, to survive a difficult situation. You keep going, you keep fighting, you manage to find a way to get through it to work through the difficulties of the situation, right? Here's an example sentence. It was tough, but I managed to get through the hard times. How? By staying focused. Okay, here's my response. When I think back to my childhood and I think about challenges that I had to get through uh, growing up, the first thing that comes to mind is just shyness. You know, I'm kind of an introvert and I understand that as an adult, but as a child, I didn't understand extroverts and introverts and I just saw myself as being very shy and that was difficult. It made it hard for me to make friends at school. Okay, now it's your turn. Tell me about the challenges that you faced growing up. Go ahead.
Question six is a pretty abstract question, but sometimes, you know, in an interview, the interviewer, the person giving the interview, will ask the interviewee, the interviewee, the person taking the interview, kind of a big open-ended question just to see how they would respond to something a little more abstract or philosophical, right? So take a look at this. How has your upbringing or the way you grew up, the way you were raised, how has that influenced who you are today? In other words, what is the link between the way you grew up and the way that you are now. So you can mention some lessons that you learned, maybe values that stuck with you. I love this, stuck with you. That means some ideas about right and wrong, some values, right, that you kept with you all your life and you have now even as an adult. And here is a really fantastic bonus vocab expression, set me up for success. What does it mean to be set up for success? It means to prepare or give a good foundation for success in the future. So something or someone sets you up for success. Something prepares you, something gives you a good foundation for success in the future. Yeah, so maybe you won't be super successful right now, but it's giving you a good starting place, a good starting point, a good kicking off point to be more successful in the future, right? Okay, so here's an example. My upbringing really set me up for success. Why? Because I learned discipline early on. Here's a fantastic word, discipline. That means being able to control yourself and being able to resist urges, right? What is an urge? An urge is something you want to do that's maybe not so good for you. Oh, I want to go smoke a cigarette. That's an urge. I want to go drink alcohol. That's an urge. If you have a lot of discipline, or sometimes we say self-discipline, then you can resist those urges. You can say, you know what? Even though I want to do this unhealthy thing, I'm putting my foot down. I'm putting my foot down and I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to do it. So here's my response. I would say that my upbringing influenced who I am today in terms of my values. You know, I come from a family with very strong family values. You know, there's a family business. We have a family business and there is a rule at that family business that never hire someone you would not have over for dinner. Never hire an employee you wouldn't trust to have over for dinner. That made a big impact on me, and I think it really set me up for success later in life. That was my response. Now it's your turn. Tell me about how your upbringing, how the way you were raised, maybe set you up for success now. Go ahead. All right, our last question was a little bit out there. It was a little bit abstract, a little hard to wrap your head around. I think this one will be a bit easier. Question seven, did you spend more time playing indoors or outdoors? Yeah, that's something a little more tangible, something we can grasp, something we can understand and respond to a bit more easily, right? So you can talk about your favorite activities, whether you did them inside or outside. Were you an inside kid? Did you spend a lot of time indoors reading, playing video games, something like that? Or were you a very outdoorsy kid? Outdoorsy. That means you spent a lot of time outside, maybe riding bikes with your friends or playing kickball or soccer in the park, something like that, right? Here's the bonus expression. 
get out and about. What does that mean, to get out and about? It means to spend time outside being active, to get out of your house, to get out there into the world, get active doing stuff, moving around, right? So look at this. I love to get out and about and explore the neighborhood with my friends. Here's my response to this question. You know, I was an interesting combination of these two things when I was a kid. I uh, I was definitely an inside kid in a lot of ways. I loved playing video games, reading comic books, you know, spending time on the computer, that sort of thing. But I also had friends who loved to get out and about, and we would go out in the neighborhood, ride bikes, go to the creek, and just generally have fun outside, too. So I was a little of both. Now it's your turn. Take the 30 seconds. Respond to question seven. Did you spend more time playing indoors or outdoors? Did you like to get out and about? Let me know. Flying along here, we're at question eight now. What did you want to be when you grew up? I love this question. In other words, when you were a little kid and you thought about the adult version of you, how did you picture that life? How did you picture the adult version of you? What were you doing? What kind of job did you have, right? So you can mention your dream job, the job you really, really wanted as a kid. You can mention any big ambitions. An ambition is maybe like a dream or a goal, something you wanted to accomplish that you had. Uh, By the time you were an adult, and you were thinking about that as a little kid. So here's the bonus expression, dream big. Here's a really great, really spoken English expression here. It means to have high goals or big ambitions. Yeah, lofty ambitions, lofty goals, lofty. If you dream big, then you really want to shoot for the stars. You really want to take a big chance and try to make the impossible happen. Happen, right? As a kid, I used to dream big about becoming a famous athlete. Maybe that seems like an impossible dream. Maybe that seems like an unattainable goal. An unattainable goal. A goal that is not easily achieved, accomplished. Something hard to do, right? Maybe that seems really difficult, but You know, if you dream big, then you can't help but want to try. Even though it seems challenging or even impossible, you really want to make an attempt to make it happen. Here's my response. You know, as a kid, I definitely dreamed big. I wanted to be a writer. Just like my dad, I wanted to write books and I wanted to publish stories and share them with the world. Well, here's the cool thing is actually I am a writer. I am a published children's book author. And to date, I have over seven books in publication. Next year, I will have another five or six books books coming out. So it was a big dream that I made happen. What about you guys? Was there a dream you had as a kid? What did you want to be when you grew up? Take the 30 seconds and respond to the question.
Now here's question nine. What role did school play in your childhood? You can talk about how important school was or maybe how unimportant, not important it was. You can talk about your favorite subjects or any other standout experiences. Yeah, what's a standout experience? An experience that comes to mind when you think about the relationship between you as a kid and your school, right? So what memories come up? What thoughts do you have about school when you were a little kid? A fantastic bonus vocab expression we can use here is a big part of my life. Yeah, that's talking about something that played an important role in your life, okay? Something that is meaningful to you. Something that means a lot to you, right? An example would be school was a big part of my life because I was always focused on getting good grades. And I guess that was a really important thing to the person in this example. Okay, I'll respond first. Here's my response. You know, when I was a kid, Actually, school didn't play that big of a role in my life. I didn't care that much about my grades. I didn't care that much about my homework. Yes, school was important to me because I could go there and see the people I wanted to see, like my friends, you know? But aside from socializing and seeing my friends, school really was not a big part of my life. It wasn't that important to me. All right, now it's your turn. Go ahead and tell me, what role did school have in your childhood? What place did it have in your childhood? How important or unimportant was it to you? Go ahead. Question 10, the final question, guys. Do you think childhood today is different from when you were growing up? Ooh, really interesting, really deep, very philosophical question that gives you a chance to share your thoughts on society today versus society when you were a kid. Yeah, you can talk about changes in technology, changes in freedom, changes in society, uh, changes in behavior, to add another one, like how do kids act differently today than they did when you were a kid, right? Now, a bonus vocab expression you can use here is changed a lot, changed a lot to become very different over time, right? Like you can say, childhood has changed a lot since I was a kid, especially with all the new technology. That would be a really great way to start your response to this question. Now, guys, since this is the final question of today's interview, I want to push you to not just speak for 30 seconds, but to speak for a full minute. So I'm going to go first. Here's my response to question 10. Here I go. Yeah, childhood has undoubtedly changed a lot. It has changed in so many ways since I was a kid. But if I think about it, the most obvious way that it has changed is technology. Oh my gosh, when I was a kid, technology was just so very different than it is today. Yeah, 20 years ago, when I was 10 years old, the ways that kids would have fun were so different than they are now. If you look at kids now, they are chronically online. In other words, they spend so many of their waking hours on the internet, on their phones, on their iPads. And you know what? When I was a kid, things were different. Yes, we played video games and watched TV, but it wasn't with us in our pocket all the time. There was still a separation between us and that technology that you don't see in today's world. All right, guys, that was my response. It's your time to shine. Take that full minute and give your response to this question. 
tell me, how is childhood now different than the childhood that you remember when you were a kid? Go ahead. You know, guys, I tried something totally new in today's episode. I had this idea for a POV interview. I wanted to try it. I kind of took a chance on this video. I'm not sure if you guys will like it or not, but I thought it would be a really useful thing to do, a really useful way to practice our listening and speaking skills and also learn some bonus vocabulary and expressions along the way, right? So if you like this video, make sure you click like and leave me a comment saying more like this if you want me to make episode two. If you guys like this video, if there's a good response to it, I am happy to keep going with this series. I would also like to take a quick moment and just say thank you to all of my channel members. You guys really make my work possible. These are people who spend $5 a month to support me as their YouTube English teacher, and they get a lot of benefits for doing so. They get PDFs for all of my lessons, all of my videos, so they can preview the lessons or review the lessons after they watch. They can also follow along with the lessons at home digitally or by printing out the PDFs to make their own notes and personalize the lesson for themselves, right? So it really kicks my lessons up a notch and takes them to the next level. But that's not all. They also get bonus videos. Yeah, bonus content that the public, that my subscribers, my normal subscribers, do not have access to. So if you would like to support me and also make that investment in yourself as an English speaker, click join here on YouTube uh, right next to the subscribe button. Or if you can't find that button, sometimes people don't see it for some reason, you can go to patreon.com slash English with Connor. They are exactly the same. Becoming a member here on YouTube or over on Patreon, you will get the exact same benefits. So Anyways, thank you to my patrons. Thank you to my channel members. You guys really make my work possible. Lastly, if you are in the middle of a study session right now, don't stop. Keep going. I'm going to put another one of my videos up there on the screen. Go click on it. I'll meet you there.